This video shows the basic workflow in Kappa Server. This includes data mirroring, noise reduction and smart filtering of high frequency data, QAQC by reloading sections of data, synchronization of pressure and rate data, and transferring data to Kappa Workstation for analysis. From the Kappa Workstation launcher, clicking on the Kappa Server icon launches Kappa Client. The Server Connection dialog provides a link to Kappa Server. Subject to hierarchical privileges, the user now has the option to open an existing field or to create a new one. In this session, a new field is created. Kappa Server supports configurable access rights at the field level, which allows different asset teams to work independently. The Kappa Client interface displays the field hierarchy. This allows field objects such as well groups, wells, PVT, field contour maps, relative permeability data, and Kappa Workstation Analysis files to be stored, viewed, and accessed centrally. A new well group is defined by clicking on the icon labeled Well Group. Under a well group, several other sub well groups or wells can be defined. These can be entered manually as shown or automatically brought into Kappa Server via an integrated database connection. Data mirroring is initiated by clicking on the gauge icon. The load dialog allows the user to select the data source. This can be files on the user's computer, clipboard or historian production database, databases with high frequency gauge data, or files with memory gauge data located on a central network storage facility. The next step is to select the relevant historian and tag for data mirroring. This data tag, once set up in Kappa Server, will automatically update and concatenate when the new data is available. Historian data tags are represented by gauges in Kappa Server. Using the Tag Search dialog, users can quickly search for available tags in the historian. Tag names, descriptions, and units are displayed. Additional information, such as data limit dates and the number of data records, can also be queried before the actual data is mirrored onto Kappa Server. The pressure tag is selected before moving on to the next step to define the time format and properties. Time format can be defined as points, durations, time at start or time at end. Data types such as pressures, rates, temperatures, as well as units are defined at this stage. Kappa Server stores all data in an SI unit format and time in UTC. So specifying the correct units and time zone at this stage enables the system to perform conversions into internal units of storage. After validating the time format and properties, Kappa Server starts the process of mirroring the data tag from the historian onto a gauge entity in Kappa Server. Kappa Server is a client server application that is designed to mirror a large number of tags. Data tags that are to be mirrored into gauges are placed into a general queue that is processed on the server in the background. Clicking on the force icon puts the tag into the separate queue to accelerate the mirroring process when immediate access to the data is required. A similar set of steps is now repeated to mirror the rate data tag into Kappa Server. Now both pressure and rate tags are being mirrored into Kappa Server. Pressure gauge data can be reviewed by switching to the plot ribbon. Notice that data is displayed in field units. Any convenient unit of display can be configured by editing the field properties in the Kappa client. Using the zoom in function, gauge data can be closely inspected. It is important to note that the gauge data is displayed as a rough sketch. This is a result of an arbitrary decimation that is applied depending on the overall volume of the gauge to show the data points as a trend on the plot. To inspect the raw data, the getRaw function can be used to fetch a slice of raw data over a selected time period. The section of raw data loaded has some inherent noise and a large number of redundant points. Filtering involves setting up noise reduction and decimation parameters for the raw gauge data so that it is converted into a manageable data set that can easily be handled in the analysis applications of the Kappa Workstation suite. 
Datasets loaded as gauges cannot be manipulated in the system until they are filtered. To set up a filter, the BHP pressure gauge is made active, and from the home ribbon, the filter icon is selected. In the filter dialog, the preload page browses through the data to find a representative slice of raw data with production and a buildup. Advancing now to the filter tab, the filtering works in two stages. First, a denoising algorithm is adjusted to eliminate as much noise as possible from the raw data, without impacting the overall trend of the original data signal. Once an appropriate filter level for denoising is selected, the next stage is to select the decimation parameters. Data sets for pressure transit analysis require both the delta T and the delta Y decimation. Delta T max controls the maximum time interval between resulting points. This option adequately captures the data signal trends that are gradually changing, such as the pressure response at the time of production. However, they fail to represent data at early time in the vicinity of a breakpoint, such as at the time of a shut-in. To capture the early time shut-in data, the delta Y max decimation is applied. This option includes a point in the resulting filter output if its increment is greater than a certain value, in this case 2 psi from the previous data point. Using both the delta T and delta Y allows for the selection of an optimal number of points that would have the same signal trend as the raw data. In this workflow, a pre-selected 100,000 raw data points are being represented by just over 600 filtered points. The denoising and decimation settings are saved with OK, and Kappa Service starts to process all the raw gauge data in the background. Any new data that is mirrored onto the gauge from the historian is also automatically filtered. A similar filter is set up for rate gauge data. In this workflow example, a single gauge will be used to get individual rates for oil and water. This is to illustrate that a single gauge can have several independent filter data sets for cases where different filtering criteria are required by the interpretation modules. Once the filtered rates channel has been processed, it is renamed and the data type is changed to oil. Next, a backup filter data set is created and renamed water. Its data type is set accordingly. A backup of the filtered BHP pressure channel is also created to illustrate partial reloading. Next, on the Edit ribbon, the Zoom on X is used to highlight the shut-in with the longest duration, and the data are locked for editing. With the Time Selection tool, the whole shut-in is selected and the reload is initiated with the reload icon. In the Filter dialog, the denoising and decimation options are deselected. The results are previewed before being validated and saved. The selected section of the data has been repopulated with the raw data. Once the Stop Editing icon is clicked, the data is saved to the server. The reloaded data set can now be used as quality control for the filter in Sapphire. So far, data have been mirrored and filter set up in Kappa Client. The next step in the workflow is to synchronize the pressure and rate data by identifying shut-in periods and using that information to correct the rates. Shut-ins can be identified manually by selecting the time of shut-in, by picking a point inside a shut-in, or by using the auto shut-in detection function. The auto shut-in detection function additionally allows the user to select only those shut-ins that meet the minimum duration and minimum pressure change criteria. Once shut-ins are detected, they can be saved back to the Kappa server and made available for other users. The shut-ins are represented in Kappa server as a logical channel. Having the shut-in information saved, production can be assigned to the well. Each production node may have oil, gas, or water phases assigned to it. Several production nodes can be created with each node representing a specific production type. 
This allows both metered and back allocated production to be assigned to the same well. Without synchronization, the production rates and pressures would have to be corrected each time the data is transferred to Sapphire. To avoid this repetitive task, correction can be automated in Kappa Server. The Create Edit Corrected Production option creates a new production channel called Corrected Production. Using the shut-in data to synchronize rate data with the pressure data. Overlaying the corrected production, metered production, and pressures on a single plot shows that the corrected production channel now has data in line with the rate data at sections where shut-ins were earlier identified. All the necessary dynamic data streams have now been assigned to the well and are continuously updated by Kappa Server. The next few steps show how easy it is to transfer rates and pressure into Kappa Workstation modules for analysis. There are several ways data can be transferred to Sapphire from the Kappa Server client. Using the Shut-In Express to transfer rates and pressures in one go, the Kappa Workstation browser by drag and drop, and by using the Kappa Send button in the Kappa Server client. Let's start with the Shut-In Express. By selecting a filtered pressure dataset with identified shut-ins and using the Shut-In Express function, both synchronized rate and pressure data are sent directly to Sapphire, and log log plots are extracted for selected shut-ins. Once the data is transferred to Sapphire, the links to Kappa Server are saved too. When an update of data is required, the update from KS function is used. Now we look at using the Kappa Send option from Kappa Server Client. The data channel to be sent is first selected in the field hierarchy, and then the target module is chosen using the Kappa Send button. Using the Kappa Workstation browser, the Kappa Server field hierarchy and a Sapphire Topaz or Ruby document structures are displayed. Simply dragging and dropping a dataset will initiate transfer of data. Data transferred into Sapphire can be further edited or simplified for specific analysis needs. At the time of simplification, a backup copy of the original dataset can be saved. With simplified rate data, model generation runs faster as fewer rate steps are used in the time superposition calculation. Analysis and model matching can now be easily performed using the analysis tools to drive the analytical model generation. Once the analysis is complete, the resulting Sapphire file can be uploaded to the Kappa server and made available centrally for other users. This concludes this Kappa server workflow session. To learn more about this or any other Kappa modules, browse the website for literature, more videos, and example data, or contact support at kappaeng.com or your local Kappa office.